יברכך אדוני וישמרך. יאר אדוני פניו אליך ויחונקה. יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Isaiah 62, it says this, For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace, day or night, and give him no rest till he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Beautiful passage. And the Lord is raising up watchmen and ministries across the earth, and especially here in Australia, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and these ministries continue to expand and develop. So today I have two guests, a husband and wife, Kim and Nell Farnick from South Australia, and they are in this category. They attend the Field of Dreams Church in South Australia and are active in ministry in Australia and have ministered in Kenya, Uganda and Israel. Some of you may know Kim from the Canberra Declaration and the National Day of Prayer and Fasting. And they have established a ministry called Celebrate Israel. Welcome, Kim, and welcome, Nell. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. That's great. Bless you. It's lovely to have you with us. And you're involved in a whole lot of things. But uh, let's just pick on a couple of things. As I said, you, um, Kim, are involved in the Canberra Declaration, Australia Praise, as that is now, and, and the uh, National Day of Prayer and Fasting. But you're also now the Oceana Representative for the World Prayer Assembly 2022. You've worked with the Billy Graham Evangelistic so- Association. I looked at all of these things that you're involved in and I see prayer, prayer, revival. Kim, you've been thrown in the deep end with the Oceana World Prayer Assembly. What would you like to tell us? Well, the World Prayer Assembly will be on uh, the 17th and 19th of uh, May this year in Central City in Indonesia. And it is a gathering of prayer leaders from around the world. It's the World Prayer Assembly and I'm representing Oceana, and there are four two-hour sessions each day for the three days, a total of 12 sessions. I'm leading and speaking in the first session. So, yes, thrown in the deep end, representing this region. Uh, and it's not about a platform. It's actually about bringing this region into the global arena with the whole body of Christ. And we're standing together to pray to call out the name, call the name of Jesus across the nations, across this nation, across this region, uh, have some prayer focus on issues we're facing. But throughout it all, I've noticed from the other speakers, for example, Rick Ridings from Sukkot Hallel will be there uh, praying for Israel. And there is a significant focus on Israel through the World Prayer Assembly. Uh, the other things obviously involved with Canberra Declaration and what was the National Day of Prayer and Fasting, now uh, Australia Praise, are expanding and growing in prayer and leading uh, in connection with other prayer networks. Uh, For example, on uh, Anzac Day, we're praying with uh, Gate to Pray and Pray as One New Zealand in a combined Anzac service. So these sort of things are happening where there's a convergence of prayer groups. And also it's interesting to observe that the World Prayer Assembly and the International Prayer Council and these other groups are all working together across the nations, are also strongly, uh, there's a strong overlap with the uh, Go movement, which is the uh, Global Day of Outreach and the the Go month, which is again May, which we are supporting for the region on Canberra Declaration with prayer every evening. So this convergence of prayer, people seeking the face of God for these nations, interceding, proclaiming the name of Jesus and uh, really activating the whole body of Christ in personal evangelism is what God is doing both in this region and globally. 
Mm, that's really exciting. And of course, the word convergence there is so important, isn't it? Um, it's happening in so many different areas. Uh, Nell, you've been very much involved with all of these areas of intercession. Um, what would you like to add to what Kim said with, with what you're involved in locally and in Australia? Intercession. Well, you know, it started a long time ago. How do I say it? 1971. Mm -hmm. uh, before I was even uh, born again or converted, my friends took me into a Pentecostal church and I was there sitting in the pew and I saw these people sitting and praying in tongues and I had <laughs> never seen anything like that in my life. And so... Prayer became a recurring theme in my life um, after I made Jesus my Lord and my first pastor, Reg Klimenok, was very strong in prayer and he modelled this for me. So um, I, I can tell you amazing stories, but I'm trying to be relevant to your question. But um, I, what I'm seeing now is not just Christians praying, but linking arms across yeah. the country, across the denominational barriers, and uh, people that we have not really prayed with before, uh, we're beginning to flow together as one, mm -hmm. like it says in John chapter 17. And so this is, this is the uh, big thing I think the Lord is doing now. The denominational walls are coming down and the new wineskin is emerging. Amen. And, and it's family. It's yeah. family now, brothers and sisters. This is how I think we will operate in the future. Amen. That's um, really powerful and where, the, where it really has to go to and so it shifts into another dimension. So in 2018 you established a ministry called Celebrate Israel. In 2017, you were like us, you're in Israel for the 100th Anzac commemoration at Beersheba. And then we were just discussing before we came on air about just before the lockdown in 2019, the Canberra uh, Jerusalem prayer breakfast uh, in Canberra that we were both sitting at the same table. What's the vision and the call the Lord gave you for Celebrate Israel, and how is that out working today? Well, initially, um, it, it was it was a it was a prayer call, but part of it was in my heart. I would like other churches and pastors to understand the importance of Israel in Father God's purposes, because some. Even when I was a new Christian, you know, it was taught that um, the church is the new Israel. Mm. And uh, the more I understand about Israel, is Israel is Israel and the church is the church. And uh, there will come a time uh, when Father's beloved chosen people, like it says in Romans, you know, all Israel will be saved and then we will flow together together as the one new man, like it talks about. But um, I, I wanted to get the word out there. But uh, first of all, it was a prayer burden because Pastor Jenny Hager, we walked a journey with Pastor Jenny Hager of the Australian House of Prayer for several years and it shifted, you know, our whole focus. It became a paradigm shift in our lives and uh Pastor Jenny was very strong on Israel and that rekindled my love for Israel. But because they had so many other commitments, the, the full extent of prayer for Israel was most probably not realised. And so I was, you know, the Lord said, start this after 2017. He said, start this meeting I didn't really know what I was doing, but I thought at least I can gather some Christians to pray once a month uh, for Israel. We meet and we have afternoon tea and we learn about Israel through PowerPoint slides and uh, we pray. And we met Tony Stewart and Kathy Stewart from the Mount Moriah Trust. Mm -hmm. And I saw how they had 
a ministry not just of going to Israel but giving to all the various ministries. And then I learnt from someone else that the Messianic ministries don't get the same support as some of the Jewish ministries. So I thought we really need to put some money into the Messianic congregations who are struggling and in the land they are not so well accepted. You know, there's Mm. a whole other difficulty surrounding being a Messianic believer in the land of Israel. And so we became a prayer and support uh, group. And then with COVID, um, there was a shift. We couldn't meet face to face. Mm. And so that was the Zoom. So the Zoom prayer started to take off and our numbers doubled like pretty much overnight. So because people are coming in now from all over Australia and there was even someone earlier from another country. So um, it's really doubled our numbers and, um, and people are really giving and we just had a big... Um, request, you know, for funds for the Ukrainian refugees who have landed in Israel. Mm. And so just over $5,000 came in for them. So we were just able to send it into the land oh. and, and bless the people over there who were looking after the refugees. So these it, it's evolved over time, but it started with prayer. And, yeah. and we can't just do prayer. We have to also be practical. Yeah. yeah. Amen. It's wonderful. My guests today are Kim and Nell Farnick from South Australia, and we'll be delving further into this in a moment. So we've just talked about prayer, and in looking at all the ministries that uh, Kim and Nell are involved in, it really has this element of redemption. God loves to redeem the bad things and the good things all of our life. He doesn't waste anything. And what I love is that you both now have a really strong heart for Israel and connections to the land. But your heritage of your parents is in Europe in World War II. And I'd love to hear your stories of what they went through and what God is doing to redeem into this whole area in regards to Israel. So, Kim, you go first. Yeah, thank you, Ruth. When I was about, I reckon, eight or nine, I was starting to become aware of things. And mum and dad would talk about not often, but it would come up something about Jews and dad who was Austrian carried this thing about, you know, Jews are the cause of all the problems in the world. It was Mm. pure uh, Nazi. It was just the upbringing and the culture of of where he'd come from after world war two. And that was just the way they talked. And it, it, it kind of surprised me though, talk that way, but then uh, something happened and that was the 67 six day war. And being a boy and loving anything to do with war and guns and so forth, and I ended up in the army, by the way, but um, mm. the, uh, the whole six-day war, how a nation could take down multiple other nations, totally overwhelmed and prevail, as a, as a nine-year-old at the time, I was stunned, and we talked a bit about it. And then a few years later, through a wonderful set of circumstances, uh, mum, uh, through some neighbours, mum ended up going to a church and uh, she gave her life to the Lord and then I did and my sister and ultimately my dad. Um, but there was a shift that happened. So that was 1970. I was 12 and a half. And we connected with a guy called Colin Stock and he had the Manor newsletter and he used to tell people about things going on in Israel. But there was this spiritual shift in our family from... Well, I was kind of neutral. I just didn't fully understand. But mum and dad, uh, mum initially, but then later dad, to recognise that Israel was way cool. And Mm -hmm. then the uh, Yom Kippur War happened and Israel prevailed again and that went for a whole month. And But we started seeing Israel in a new light. And then later on in my career, I ended up working with a Jewish guy um, in in IT and he wore the kippah and the whole deal and and he was really good and we were good friends and just things opened up and the man and newsletter went for quite a few years and was very informative and we ended up praying for Israel. And just over time, I got to love Israel. I've always been interested in things military and particularly World War I, World War II, the French and Russian revolutions, an area of history I study. 
but also Israel and how she's prevailed and how God, the absolute miracles of what has happened to, to protect Israel and establish Israel. Hmm. And as that's come along, it's just simply I've grown into it and to the point where we absolutely love, support and honour what God's doing for Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, hmm. and our hearts there. Hmm. And yeah. the first time we went, uh, the first time I went, I just about cried. It was, uh, I'm a big bloke and I'm like, you know, just an <laughs> Aussie bloke, but it brought tears to my eyes mm. and I was home. Yep. I was really at home yep. and we love Israel. And so we turned from a family that um, effectively cursing Israel, although as a child, I didn't know any better to th- my whole family coming to a point of loving Israel and loving the Jews. Mm. And that is redemption and that is the hand of God. Yeah. Thank Amen. you, Ruth. Wow, that's that's such a powerful story. And I certainly relate to that crying when you land in Israel. And I cry when I take off and leave as well. Feel like some of your heart's been left behind. But what a powerful story of the Lord turning the anti Semitic heart, that Nazi uh, mindset to supporting Israel. And that's what I just love. Now, now your, sto- your f- family are a uh, German background? Well, uh, mum was German and she came from what you would call the eastern part of Germany. They moved the borders after the war. Today it's Poland, but it was East mm. Germany way back with mum. And um, she had her first husband, but he went missing in the war. And then she married another gentleman from Romania. So they came together after the war. So they both came out here, you know, on the ship. Mm -hmm. And I was born here. And my mum was actually in the Luftwaffe. So she was a plane spotter. So they had the big white, the big uh, glass maps. And she'd write on there in the white chalk Mm -hmm. and show where all the planes were and so on and I saw a photo of her in her uniform but she burnt nearly everything because over here she didn't want to be rejected uh, Mm. for you know her past background when she worked for the Luftwaffe and I know that my mum had some of these feelings about um you know, the Jewish people, a bit like what Kim said, you know, she said, oh, I think that man down there, I think he's a Jew. He looks like a Jew. <laughs> She'd do all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing was um, 1971, like I said before, that is when I was converted or born again, but at exactly at the same time, I had a lump of love in my heart for the Jews. Mm. And I have no idea. I thought every Christian in the whole world had that. And then I discovered every Christian in the whole world didn't have that. And so I was like, Kim, I got the Manor newsletter, which was the thing at the time. And I bought all the Jewish knickknacks, which I really enjoyed. Uh, And, you know, the beautiful thing that um, happened was my mum went to Melbourne because I was based in Brisbane at that time. And she knew this. Uh, But she must have gone to one of these Jewish shops and she bought me a proper Hanukkah, which is the nine, you know, branch candlestick. Mm. And it's the best one I've ever seen in my whole life. It's got the Lion of Judah on it and everything. So she even bought me that because she knew I was loving Jesus and loving Israel. And so that was the beginning of uh, changes that were happening. But um, so... Can I just ask how she felt about it when you started to uh, love the Jewish people from where she'd been I, in, in Germany? I, I think, you know, it was, it was most probably a journey um, because over here the attitude was different from Europe. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I think there's, you know, it becomes like... Um, the propaganda of the culture or the subculture. And so anyway, it was it was not really an issue. And mm. for some reason, I don't know why, but she did accept me. And at one point in her life, she did pray the sal- salvation prayer. And I saw, you know, her heart softening in a lot of areas, you know. So I saw her mm. heart softening and I saw love growing because my mum, 
as beautiful as she was, she was really, you know, knocked around by the war, mm -hmm. losing her first husband, um, you know, dealing with everything. And she, she had a toughness about her that came out of the war. And I saw the Lord melt her heart with love. And then by the time we had Kim and I got married and had our son, you know, all of these things really restored something in her heart. Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. like I said, in the beginning, I had the, the love for Israel, but I did not understand it. And then we travelled our church journey, if I can say that. But when Father put us with Pastor Jenny of the Australian House of Prayer and Israel was such an important part of their prayer life that it rekindled my love for Israel because I had no teaching on it. Mm. And so that that's when David Davis and Peter Sukahira, they came to Adelaide. And so the Lord said, go to one of their conferences. So I went the next year. And so I've done the three trips and I know that there's more to come. But, yeah, so that was uh, it. What I've come to recognise this crying for Israel as a call. Yeah. It's the call of the Holy Spirit to your heart for Israel mm -hmm. and for his beloved chosen people. So, and I see it in many people and they just weep. Yeah. They yeah. weep for Israel. Like we weep for Israel, yes. but it is a call of God mm -hmm. for to love them, to serve them, to bless them. But some people don't know why they cry. Yeah. We and don't that, know why we cry. It's just something the Holy Spirit puts in us, isn't it? And you it can't, is. You but can't. I say it's a call. It, it's not just a prayer burden. Each yeah. one of us, I believe, I always say it's not if it's the will of God. I say it is the will of God for you to go to Israel because we're children of Abraham okay. and that is our inheritance. And so whatever gifts God puts in our lives, we're meant to bless not just the body of Christ but also his beloved Israel with our gifts and talents and abilities. Amen. I just love the story of both of you with that history and God just turning around that anti-Semitic and it just shows what the grace of God and the power of God to transform hearts and then to put his heart into our hearts. Um, I'm with Kim and Nell Farnick from South Australia.
Well, my guests today are Kim and Nell Farnick from South Australia. And as we said earlier, they've started a ministry um, praying for Israel. But there's a new thing on the horizon, Kim. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, it's actually Nell. So I'll do a bit of an intro and then Nell will give it, fill in the details a bit. But a while back, Nell had, had it on a heart to bring all of the uh, leaders of Israel supporting ministries in Australia together, not uh, as another hierarchical organisation, but rather uh, a roundtable or forum or um, some sort of collegiate structure where we simply relate together and everyone can hear what everyone else is doing. Everyone can support each other with a goal that as a, as a block, as it were, politically, that we can represent the Christian view of Israel to the government, not as a bunch of little organisations, but all of these organisations working together. And also in times of trouble that we can pull resources. We can also look at um, the ability to look at what's complementary and what's unique and how we can support and work with each other with a view to um, really having a concerted Australian, in fact, regional, because New Zealand's involved as well, regional support from the ends of the earth back to Jerusalem. And with that thought, I'll hand over to my wife to explain Great Southlands Israel Forum. Wonderful. Thanks, Nell. Okay, thank you. Well, it, because I pray with another group, we call ourselves the Israel Watch on Monday afternoons. And some people might know the name of Jane O'Neill, but um, a letter came forward about the time when Donald Trump put the embassy into Jerusalem. Um, there was a lot of movement here for uh, putting, putting it to the government. Why doesn't Australia put its embassy into Jerusalem as well? So Jane organised this letter and she requested all the Israel groups in Australia to submit their logos. So on the bottom of the letter were many, many of these little logos of all the Israel organisations, and it was really beautiful. But the idea came to me, why don't we all work together as one? Mm. And uh, first of all, it was a throwaway thought or a line, but it grew on me and it grew in my heart for about a year. And... The Lord said to me, this is the time now to action this vision. And so I started speaking to Glenn Robotham, who has the Elohim House of Prayer up in Haifa. And I said, Glenn, this is the vision. Would you work with me? And he loves the vision. And he said, yes. And so there's Kim and Nell, Glenn and Coralie and and his um his colleague called Colin Brown and his wife, Tina Marie. And so the three of us are working together and inviting leaders that we know and we relate to in Australia, in New Zealand, uh, possibly the islands. Uh, someone's been talking to Roy Funu uh, and with that, you know, his island background. And so... The word is going out and we will launch on the 28th of April with a, with a Zoom call. First of all, we need to meet each other and hear each other's hearts. You know, why do we uh, love Israel or what's the burden? Because some people like Barbara Miller, she writes books hmm. and uh, someone like Enoch Lavender teaches and I call Ruth Webb a worshipping warrior. <laughs> and so we all contribute something different. And so I even said this to Barbara Marshall and she said she tried something like this 20 years ago, but it just didn't fly at that time. And I think maybe after COVID, after mm -hmm. everything we've been through, people are seeing the importance of coming together and supporting each other in difficult times. And so we can do more together and separately and also we we don't want to reinvent the wheel and I said Lord how do we move forward because other organizations are already lobbying uh, parliament and so on about Israel related matters and the Lord said to me we move forward in love mm. and this is his message to me all the time that to be able to reach his beloved in Israel 
it's always a message of love. Absolutely. Because it's it's not about religion, it's not about all the things they or we have to do. It's about loving people. And mm. so this is the father's heart to love others and to love each other. And some people I've spoken to, they even feel a bit isolated doing their ministry pretty much on their own. Mm. And, you know, even to find a safe place for leaders to talk together. And again, like Kim said, collegiate, but I call it family because brothers and sisters in the back of my mind, Mm-hmm. I've got pictures of like Corrie Ten Boom and how she had to move that wardrobe off the wall, you know, yes, to hide yes. the Jews in the hole behind the wall and everything. And I did see her in 1972 because uh, I, I was part of the outreach when in the Munich Olympics when they had that yes. big terror attack. Mm. So uh, I was exposed to the teaching of Lauren Cunningham, Brother Andrew, uh, Corrie Ten Boom and others that were teaching there at that time. So I feel in in a dangerous time or in a war time, you don't need doctrine. You don't you don't need pews. You need to trust each other. Mm. And so with love and trust and relationship, I feel that this is the way forward and Mm. The assignments the Lord give, give, will give us will be birthed out of this love. Mm. It's, um, I was just thinking back to some years ago when Benjamin Netanyahu was the prime minister and he said, Israel's best friends are the evangelicals, as he called the, all the Christians, because in, in a, the, the changing geopolitical situation in Israel with the rise of anti-Semitism, with all the things that are happening across the Middle East, there are many countries actually standing against Israel. And right now, and I, I just love this, it's like joining locking shields so that we're stronger together, two puts a thousand to flight and so forth. Uh, that we can stand together, but for the Jewish people to know that we're their friends, we're not their enemies. Mm. And that's uh, so powerful. So anything else you'd like to just say on that in terms of what's happening geopolitically and how this, how you see this working out, Kim? Yeah, I just uh, feel that all of these things, again, that word convergence, but Mm. at the end times, the, global focus will be on Israel because Jesus That's returns right. to the Mount of Olives. Yep. So there is an increased focus on Israel. Um, even Ukraine, the whole Ukrainian situation has a reflection in Israel. Israel handling a lot of refugees and obviously a lot of Jews in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. There are so many things that are touched by Israel. Uh, I know the Christians in China have the back to Jerusalem thing very strong right. on their heart. So it doesn't matter what part of the globe you're from. God is raising the profile of Israel and the end time purposes of Israel and anti-Semitism, which is from the pit of hell uh, is yep. part of that problem uh, because the enemy would, would seek to destroy Israel. But we are rising up. We, the Ecclesia, the church globally are rising up with a, a fresh, alive understanding of the purposes of Israel. But we also pray as per Romans, uh, the book of Romans, uh, that all Israel will be saved. And Amen. it's very simple. We have a heart for the people. We have a heart for the nation. We have a heart for the land. And we stand against darkness uh, together as the Ecclesia. Uh, mm. So I really appreciate the ability to share today. There's so many more things we could have talked about, but um, time is limited on these things. I, I'm sure we could do a yeah. series for a month and not exhaust anything, but God bless you, Ruth. And we together bless you and thank you for all you're doing through this radio show and all the other work you're doing. Amen. Bless you. Amen. And that's so true. We could do many more programs, uh, but bless the Lord and thank you for your input. And and, uh, it really is a time to stand together in our love and our prayer for the Jewish people. God bless you both. And we'll talk to you again soon.